Um, but I, wa I, I sat uh, one Peach Saliva down, one noted having never seen before any Cowboy Bebop, and we watched the first episode of the new slash live action redo spin off whatever she hasn't on the seen Netflix. the original zero oh okay so i was like i'm gonna so what i was like for the I podcast like what it. i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna watch one of each mm -hmm. back to back mm -hmm. and i know the first episode syncs up mm-hmm and uh and i'm not gonna watch any more because i already had friends of mine who were watching it and just like i would check the discord general chat and they'd be like i just finished episode three god damn it god god fucking damn it i'm like okay, okay well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna waste my life like well, watching something that i already probably know i'm gonna hate but what i am gonna do is sit down and do a compare and contrast off of one episode well, you would be joining. A shot. You would be joining the good ranks of one Hideo Kojima, who also tweeted out that he watched one episode and then decided to continue watching the other thing he was looking at. Uh, Hellbound. Yeah. Um, I saw. A tweet I didn't. I didn't watch week. any. I wanted to squeeze I, some in, but I was too busy. I saw a tweet last week that was like, "Hey, hate watching idiots. Try this. Just don't watch it." And I was like. You know, I have to know at least something when I come on this show, so I'm going to watch one. Yeah. But I have no intention to to go back to it unless I had walked away with, wow, that was really incredible. I was thinking um, about forcing it to forcing one as well, but um, I just, you know, there was other things going on. And um, at the same time, consider don't watching it, like... I still have not seen any of Reboot the Guardian code. Well, I mean, that's just visibly damaging. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I have, like, I haven't even done the curiosity. Don't watch you have it. footage of it in your video? From the trailers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. So let's, let's kick it off there. All right. So. I'm going to just walk you through the, 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 the event of watching it because I think the context adds a little something, which is sit page down. Page has never seen either. So I say, okay, if we're going to watch one and then the other back-to-back -back compare and contrast, we should watch the live action one first so that Paige, who has no knowledge of any of it, has the best possible first impression. Right? So we start watching the first one. And I'll give you uh, the secondhand peach saliva review, which she was done, and she was like, "I was really bored the whole time." Is the 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 peach saliva review of the first episode of Cowboy Bebop? Just bored. Not even anything mean to say, other than just bored. Now for my take. I have it on good authority that the first episode is one of the better ones. So it's a good one to do this. The first red flag for me was when I went to the Netflix. The Netflix? The net... Multiple Netflix. There we go. And, Wooly, do you know how long these episodes are? I would assume half an hour. They're 60 minutes long! Really? Yeah. How many are there? Like ten? There are they're an hour each. <laughs> really? Some are like forty-five ish. But they're sixty so, minute episodes. So then by default, they have to add half of the content from whatever the source episode was, unless it was a multi parter. No. You're on the right track. By default, they have to add more than half the content because they don't have the budget to do everything that was actually in the show. Mm. <laughs> so, episode one of Cowboy Bebop live action is about getting Asimov, who is smuggling the bloody eye with his girlfriend. Right? Mm-hmm. My number one takeaway from everything to do with this is the word pacing. 
Pacing is vital to any creative work. Your shit needs to flow from scene to scene and not drag. What you have with the Cowboy Bebop uh, uh, live action is you have the Asimov story with Bloody Eye taken from 22 and a half minutes and is now ballooned into 60 minutes. There is not 60 minutes worth of that story. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a bunch of stuff. And by a bunch of stuff, I mean people talking in a room. Okay. So, you know when you know when uh, uh, people Jet talking and, uh, in a room can be good or bad. You know, you know when Jet and Spike are like talking about uh, how they're broke and that they have no beef for their bell yep. peppers. Yeah. And then they go, "We got to go to Tijuana." I rewatched the the real version after this, and that scene is about two minutes long. Mm -hmm. What if I told you in the live action cut? It's like nine minutes long and has two parts and includes parts in which Jet starts to complain that because Spike broke a bunch of stuff on their last job that he doesn't have enough money to buy the new fancy doll for his daughter. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, this scene is going nowhere. And I'm pretty sure they invented him having a daughter so that he would have something to complain about to Spike in this scene to add two or three more minutes to the scene. Like, everything feels like filler. Do you remember when Naruto had a full year of filler? And then, Bor then Naruto came back, and then within the first episode, they started inserting filler in between real scenes? Yeah, they started stretching it out. This is what that feels like. Okay. This feels like, here's the scene from Cowboy Bebop that's been extended. Here's a bunch of shit that doesn't matter or is lame. Here's a bunch of... So a really good example is they want Faye to be in the first episode. So uh, Asimov's girlfriend is no longer uh, his just girlfriend. She's a rich girl that's running away from her rich, rich dad. And okay. Faye is there on a bounty to get her. Oh, uh, okay. And so and they, and the yeah, okay. and the story still goes the same way where they die, yada yada. But like it's, well, Faye needs to be here. Well, what possible reason could we have Faye to be here? Aha! We'll add a a subplot that goes nowhere. That the girl is the rich. Um, when Jet and Spike are in a room by themselves talking to each other, it's all right. Like, it's Good. like, it's, I would say you could totally be like, yeah, okay, yeah, this is fun, Ste fun uh, banter. Stephen Cho, and I, I forget the, the gentleman's name who plays Jet. Um, uh, they're, they're, they, they have a lot of good chemistry and, uh, they do a good job talking to each other and riffing on each other and, and giving you that feeling of like begrudging old pals that kind of work together. Oh, John Cho, not Steven Cho? My mistake. Uh, but uh, I just want to the banter around. is important. But, it needs to be. It needs to be enjoyable. But when Faye is on the screen, it's bad. It's not. It's bad. It's not good. It's the, not good. The sass energy from the trailers is uh, is is exactly what you get. Then. It's, ex it's exactly what you get. Mm -hmm. It's 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 okay. It feel it feels like Olivia Munn's Psylocke started to make jokes. <laughs> okay. I, I understand. That, I understand. If that, if that I, I actually, I actually do understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it's. I I don't know. Just her, man. It's it doesn't translate for shit. Uh, whatever they've done with this character. Also. 
Um, so, do you remember the dynamic um, fight that uh, Asimov and uh, Spike have where he's wearing the poncho? Yeah. And they're, like, rolling around the table? Yeah, it's the first time you get to see, like, oh, shit, Spike can do stuff. So, when we watched the, 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 the anime version, I was really impressed because there's... They're rolling around the table, and mm -hmm. the and like the shot is tracking them, and then you have a shot of the girlfriend like aiming a gun at them when they're in the like the far background, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting. And instead, you have a fight between Faye and Spike, and it's just shot flat, like from a side angle. Okay. I have nothing more to say. That's that's what you get instead. So it's just a less it's just less of a yeah a, a thing going on. And then okay. you know when they get in the in the in the cars and they they do the little chase that's only yeah. like a minute long. Yeah. What if instead we had a boring shootout in a a, a parking lot? Because the, and, because the budget for the chase would be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. because it's yeah. it's a really short scene. Um, but. The, the So I'm sure there's a lot of people at home who have watched at least the first episode, and particularly people in the live action who have watched the first episode. There is a shot that where Faye, like the gunfight is over, and Faye picks up like a rifle and runs directly at the camera in direct center flame frame with a empty parking lot behind her. That's it's like a two second cut. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. That is so bad and amateur that I burst out laughing. It looked like something we would have filmed. Like it's terrible. Like it's okay. it's like there's so, a bunch of random shots that just look. There's a, some stuff that looks really good, and there's other cuts that are just god awful. So is this a case of like? Everything referenced is solid and everything not is bad in a Game of Thrones kind of way? No. Because um, the stuff that they do that is um, the same is usually done in a way where they're having to cut corners. Um, so, you know when Spike bumps into her and, and, gets, and she drops her groceries and then mm -hmm. turns out he picked up like five groceries? Mm -hmm. Instead, what if we had... A little monologue where he lights her cigarette and talks about how he was in love once and then woke up for a dream as the camera then holds on him as he stares into space for about 10 seconds and here's here's where i decided to just really never watch it because uh everyone's opinion seems to be the same on at least one thing and every time I saw it, I was like, I'm going to, I hate this. Um, there are five flashbacks slash cuts to Spike's past in the first episode, including Vicious being in the first episode. Wow. And Julia being in the first episode. Wow. Okay. And... Like you can't get away from it. Like you, like every time you're like, "Oh yeah, I had some off." He's he's like, "I was in love." Mm. Like over and over and over. Mm. Okay, I'm seeing Ju Victor, Vicious, and Julia in every single episode. Great. Okay. Um, okay. 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 And um, yeah, no, that mm, I don't. I don't. I I don't enjoy that being that constant it's better when it's sporadic and unexpected yeah and uh the other thing is that vicious i'm sure his actor is doing the best that he can with given what he was given mm -hmm. is like a a bomb on your enjoyment like his his the the one scene that i've seen with vicious is like abysmal the casting is horrible the wig is hilarious like how's the music it's it's yoko isn't it Wooly, let me ask you a question as a longtime consumer of media and adaptations if you have a a perfect soundtrack but you can't figure out a way to get all the sounds that you want into your thing how do you force the soundtrack into a scene 
I, I don't understand your question. So in in uh, Asteroid Blues, there's a harmonica solo that is the theme of the episode, right? Yeah. But there's no harmonica s solo in the actual soundtrack. So and there's no place to put it. So what do you do? Cut to res. Spike sitting on the couch in the bebop, listening to it on his headphones. Okay. Because they, because <laughs> okay. they can't okay. figure out okay. where to put it. Okay. The So the soundtrack is passable, and in some cases it uses the old soundtrack. Um, but it's not there for much of the, the show. It's a 60-minute runtime, so most of the scenes have no music okay and the music that is there is kind of understated is kind of hiding out in the background um i went when the action scene of the shootout in the parking lot starts in the live action cowboy bebop i can't remember if they played music or not okay which when we watched the uh, net, uh the, the anime version I remarked to Paige, I'm like, this feels like a band is hiding behind the background set and is striking up when the, when the director tells them that the action is starting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I'm thinking of, like, uh, Stray Dog Strut, like, when the chase starts. Yeah. Like, the band strikes it up. Um, it just feels totally point... It's totally pointless. Like, I don't understand why it is existing here it is i'm not and, gonna watch uh, any more but no nah, nah, nah. okay um i mean the, the the sounds have been coming in like over the course of the week about the rest of the episodes and if you're saying that's one of the better ones i'm curious to know what the best one is um but the thought that it's like on the one hand, I was like, okay, there's it's a shorter series, so they're gonna have to compress everything, which means by default you're gonna have to get all those vicious related episodes sooner. But then, in terms when, of minutes, it's actually almost the same. It's but the that's the of, thing like, when you episodes. find out it's sixty minutes, and it's like, oh, then they took ten episodes <laughs> and doubled their length, almost so the, tripled. Yeah, so then you have to add a bunch to them, and there's that, and then. Okay, so it, it, yeah, it's a that's a weird thing, that's a weird way to go about it. Um, I mean, I think you'd think that like, especially since the director has said like, this is Cowboy Bebop, we don't want to fuck this up, you know, and like, there's been a lot oh, of no, there's been a lot of statements about that, and and like once I read that, I was like, it's clear from the way it was marketed that they were nervous about its reception and about the person and about fucking it up because you wouldn't do this like here's a photo of the cast that's it okay now here's a little bit of the set okay now here's tank and just like the little the little drop drip feed is done in such a like cautious way to warm people up to the idea that that's how it's felt you know um so when he says like yeah we know this is cowboy bebop let's not fuck this up you're like okay like the pre he feels the pressure of this decision you would think that with that idea, you'd want to take the weight off by making each episode a half hour and relying as much as you can on the source material. You know, that choice of phrase is really, really a good coincidence. Because you know that thing they say about weight? Yep. What if the quote in the live action version was the actual direct opposite of the quote? <laughs> <laughs> you got to take your weights off. You got to drop I'm them not, on the floor. I'm not gonna. You got to leave them behind. <laughs> Ignore them. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I don't have to carry mine. nothing. Yeah, that's pretty much actually what it is. Actually, like not even joking. I have a good friend of mine who is watching the whole thing because Cowboy Bebop's his favorite show. And he's a really laid back guy who tries to see the good in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never, I, I, he's one of those guys who, when you say, you, when you watch like the worst movie ever and you go, oh my God, that was garbage. And he saw it also, he'll be like, yeah, it wasn't great. You know, that kind of yes. positive person. Sure. Yeah. 
And he got to the end of what I think is the third or fourth episode and was like, I can't believe what they did to Julia. Why do they hate these characters? Okay. So here's a question. <laughs> and this is this is one that I don't know if we'll be able to answer, but it's the one that I'm I'm the most curious about. How is this received by someone who has no idea what your source material was and B how is this received by someone who likes the source material and remembers it 20 years ago but it is not sharp and fresh in their memory now so shot to shot moments and conversations are just gone so, though and that's it's just going off of because I haven't watch. rewatched Cowboy Bebop in about 10 years okay. I, I only rewatched the, the anime afterwards uh, Paige was bored. She was bored to tears. Okay. Like, uh, like uh, it was the moment. Uh, it took us, uh, it's a 60 minute episode, took us two and a half hours to watch it, I think. Okay. Because we would pause it and just start talking about something else. Because I feel like, I feel like um, the, if you had to look by the numbers, there's going to be uh, some people who are going to like do the thing like you just said, like where you're like, okay, let's go back and make the comparison and see how this holds up. And there's going to be a lot of people who are coming off of just like, ah, I remember, sort of, but not every single episode, you know, and uh, are just going to like I tell go, you what, go with the I, feeling if, of it. If I did not, if I did not ha had ever watched Cowboy Bebop at all and was seeing this, uh, I would be a lot more open to it. I would think that uh, Vicious's wig is terrible. There's no escaping that. There's no escaping that. It's like... I don't know who is running the, the wig department at Netflix, but, like, did you see any of the Witcher shit? Like Geralt's the, wig the is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, capital T, awful. Um, But my number one takeaway would be that I don't like Faye as a character because she is cringe. Hmm. I mean, you that, that was felt from the trailer, and that was felt from some of the clips I saw... Um, a clip where someone added a laugh track to uh, oh, yeah. them yeah, having it, like it, a Seinfeld booth scene. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I saw that and I was like, oh boy, okay, yep. I I, I I'm picking up that kind of energy. Um, <laughs> Olivia Munn Psylocke is <laughs> is a very particular, and it's like, yeah, that's about right. She's um, telling jokes. Yeah, She's girl yeah, boss. Yeah. Um, there's that, and then. Uh, what else? There was, um, I mean, there was a couple things that, like, I saw that were, like, later episode, uh, stuff that people were like, they did what to what? Oh my god, right? Uh, I've, I've seen the changes to Gren, and it's, like, not, it's not good. okay. Um, there's a, yeah, there's, I've seen, there's a bunch that, that have just been flowing by the timeline, and I was like, eh, I might, uh, I might, I might actually watch the, the, the whole thing at some point, uh, I, 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 it's on my list of things I want to do, but um, it's going to take time to do the episode comparison of both. Mm -hmm. Is the original on Netflix? No, I don't know. Because can people I, I, kind I, of just I click found, off? So I found my own way of watching that somehow. Can people just click off? And yeah, okay, they can and go there. People are say, saying yes. Okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, and to add it, by the way, uh, uh, page uh, people are asking after we watched the original, um, we watched. Sorry, after we watched the live action, Paige and I watched the uh, original, in which mm -hmm. she was like not edge of her seat, right? Mm -hmm. But like very much enjoying it, and was like surprised at some of the the changes in which. The ending of the anime of Asma's plot is way more tragic than yeah. the version we, than the well, version we get in the live action. Well, do you get the fucking the the the, the belly pregnant belly scene? Oh yeah, you get all that. It's shot okay. bad. Okay, it's just okay. uh the the big difference is that in the live action, uh, Asimov gets shot in a in the gunfight in the parking lot and dies in space, and that's why she kills herself with the by police. Okay. Whereas in the anime, she just goes, fuck this, and just murder-suicides them, which is like 100% worse. I think mean, that's so much worse. Um, what? Okay. 
Here's now, and this is the this is the this is the, the the times where like my brain starts going, where it's like, what would you do if someone was like, okay, we want to do this, we want to adapt it, you know, mm-hmm. you got to get the right person for the job, we got to get the cast, and do they do they line everything up, and it's just like, okay, what, how do we go about this, right? Would you, what what if they just did like, let's say for some weird reason you just do knocking on heaven's door by itself okay all right yeah okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. all right and see yeah. how that goes well woolly i have good news for you and then if it works out go backwards and if it doesn't everybody good job good business not really take care go our separate well, ways well woolly i have good <laughs> news for you no there is knocking on heaven's door in the live action cowboy bebop we have knocking on heaven's door at home yes there's two parts one the opening of the show the initial like opening scene is a variation on the opening scene in knocking on heaven's door uh but instead of a a convenience store robbery that takes a total of maybe 120 seconds to go through it is a 11 to 15 minute scene which is a massive gunfight and set piece on a space casino. Uh, but more importantly than all of that, the moment that I was, the moment I knew I was doomed watching this show was in the convenience store robbery in the Cowboy Bebop film. There's a protracted, maybe 45 second bit, in which Spike pretends not to hear people with guns because mm-hmm. he's wearing his headphones mm-hmm. and uses that to gain the upper hand on them. Right, mm-hmm. and it's this nice little bit. Guy's pointing a gun at him. He's just kind of not looking, and mm-hmm, the guy's like, "Take mm-hmm. your headphones off." In the live action one, he walks out of an elevator into a you know a gun battle room where people are dead on the floor with his headphones on and looking around. And the guy yells at him to take his headphones off, and he takes his headphones off, and he goes, "What are you doing here?" And that's it. And that's it. And it's like, that is the ultimate of like catering to the the text rather mm. than the spirit. Mm-hmm. The spirit mm-hmm. is that he's a laid back idiot mm-hmm. who is willing to do a stupid little joke with mm-hmm. his headphones to get the upper hand. Whereas here, he just looks like a bum. And also like an idiot that he doesn't, he just takes the headphones off and just, uh, whatever. I, you know what we should really get with your earlier question? Because I've seen people talking about this. This is a way better idea. What we need to do is start giving the rights to American live action shows to Japanese anime directors. And seeing what happens. <laughs> I saw, I think it was Mr. Gene Park, friend of the show, yeah. who said you should give uh, Breaking Bad to Hideaki Anno with a two-sentence yeah. description and not let him watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm down i'm, I'm i'll watch a- that i'm absolutely down <laughs> i mean it's just gonna it's gonna be the same thing every fucking time and 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 <sighs> unless you're watching speed racer uh that's the one right <laughs> it's the one that's the one yeah no it seems it seems over time that 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 always comes back up as like damn they actually did it also um, for real like genuinely for real like can let's let's not even take speed racer let's take a, a different example that's less obvious can you adapt anime into live action and the answer is yes there's speed racer by the wachowskis which acclaimed directors uh creators of the matrix shit zillions of dollars on it um but if you can't get that what you can do is get the wachowskis and give them a shit zillion dollars and make the matrix Mm -hmm. which is a live action adaptation of ghost Mm -hmm. in the shell and dragon ball Uh like straight Uh, up they've alita Alita worked um alita is a like half cg thing so 
a CG yeah, adaptation. It's a little blurred. Because because CG adaptations have worked before, you know. Um, Alternatively, you can get Guillermo del Toro and give him a budget and a bunch of robots to play with. So like, you can do it. You just need to give it to real ass directors. Shinichiro Watanabe presents The Sopranos. <laughs> Let's see it, Tony. Let's why you gotta it. be a gun zombie? <laughs> oh, Tony, you backer! <laughs> Isn't that just but even... but Baca Bacano Bacano? Bacano. I mean, what how do you the... even say? How do you even say Guma <laughs> at that point? Like, yeah. Anyways, <sighs> um, well, this is going to continue to happen for the rest of our lives. I hope everyone's ready for it. Um, I, I'm gonna, like, I'm, I, gonna, I'm gonna sit down and watch and see what I think of the rest of it. But I, I think... the, we live we live in this world where it's like it, it's worth capitalizing on the nostalgia, um, even if like one out of thirty or forty fifty not even not even like I can think of two, one that's a direct adaptation out of like all. Because then there's but here's the thing, right? There's live action um, Japanese movie. Of the anime or of Kenshin's the, of the all manga. Right. There was Kenshin. I've, I've seen I've seen bits of Kenshin. It's yeah. All right. It was it it was all it was all right. Um, Twentieth Century Boys worked. That was that the the live action on that. Like I was I was quite surprised at how much of that GTO was worked. GTO worked right. Um, so I really really like the 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 GTO live action drama. Um. And, like, even giving the benefit of the doubt to, like, what all the th all the shit in JoJo in that one weird fucking thing, part mm -hmm. four movie. Like, we talked, I talked about it before, but it's like, even there, I'm like, you added a couple of things that I don't hate, you know? Um, but when it comes to the Western adaptation, I guess, uh, you're just, it's a different beast entirely. And... You're going off of like everyone's memories of the source material, and then the and the director's choices, and then this new writer and this new director's interpretations of some of that subtext, and how to expand upon it, you know. And that really just sounds like D and D working on Game of Thrones, like it's mm -hmm. it's a recipe for failure. Um. Is Speed Racer the only one as far as Western goes? And like again, we, Alita if, CG. If we questionable, include, but. if we include manga, you could say um, oh, it had Tom Cruise in it. Edge of um, Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Yes, but that becomes a completely different property with the core concept being um, mm -hmm. the same. All you need is kill. Like vastly differs. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah, no. Meanwhile. Oh, I just me looked over and saw an all caps phrase of old boy. And I'm just like, oh, man. Meanwhile, this like adaptations of like comics. Um, there's a bunch of good ones that have been fine. Obviously, I mean, Sin City I've, I've listed as like, yo, we're just filming the panels. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, um, Road to Perdition. Uh, worked out quite well. Um, History of Violence, you know. Oh, I didn't know that was a, a novel. Or they're a... they're based on comics, yeah. Huh. You know, um, it's it's doable in just that. Like, and I'm and I'm thinking specifically of like almost like graphic novel into into film kind of uh, things as opposed to more so like like comic stuff. But yeah, um, dread, you know. It, it it's 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 can be it, it works a lot better in those examples, but the the cross the the international adaptation seems doomed. All right, well, more on Cowboy Bebop when uh, when more from is from Wooly later. <laughs> Not for I me. I've, I've said my piece. I was like I was like I went from like oh that's okay to bored to cringe. Like that's 
it's not it's just not worth watching because the one um, thing one thing that i was i was definitely concerned about um from like those previews was just the the, the amount of time compressed means and also the temptation to blow your wad by getting fans of the original excited for things that happen later you know like showing too much of your hand giving it like have you seen the the clip of ed of what ed no i haven't it's uh so that's a thing it's the stinger so that you get excited for the second season okay because clearly they're like I mean the way that they framed the in, the like tank intro was like we are putting a blank spot here and we just didn't do it and it's like okay I guess this is a world with I'm the dog and that's it then um but yeah blowing blowing the wad too early you know what well they just just take just take two seconds and and, and watch and watch this crap <laughs> Do you, do you want to you want to talk about how not to adapt things to live action? I have the 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 re, I have it for you here. Um What if you didn't adapt it at all? What if you just didn't change anything at all? Ah, oh, there, yeah, there it is. By the way, oh those God. of you at home, those of you at home for uh, listening to the audio version, you'll obviously have to oh track down. Oh my God, a that's awful! Of Wooly's face. Oh screen. shit! Oh, they fucked up! <laughs> wow, they fucked up! Oh wow! Okay. All right. Oh no! Yeah! No! <laughs> what? Huh? Ugh! Paige, when she saw that, made, said that it reminded her of going to uh, get foam for a foam adventure. Yeah, no, no, that's a con. We went to a con for a second there. That, oh, oh, man. Yeah, no big fucking flashback to the anime club in college. Ooh. Ooh, you know, that's like, bad. But also, so like, you can't, you kind of can't do, no, but, oh. You can't so do actually, it. There's no winning on that. No, no, no. I've watched this scene over and over and over. Ooh. And over and over. This is the, I, I probably <laughs> seen this scene for a total Ooh. thirty minutes. Ooh, that's we're talking bad. about. We're talking about Ed as that's the singer so for Cowboy Bebop man. live action. And, um, <laughs> there's three things that you could have done. Sorry, there's four things. I have, what? I have a list of four things. I'm I'm at a loss. Enlighten me. Okay, four things. One, Ed's goggles are not necessarily meant to be robot screens. They just look that way due to the way they shaded the glass. Two, her hair's just supposed to be messy. Just supposed to be messy. Doesn't have to be in these weird side drills. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be my hair right now, but less bald. Just messy. Okay. And then the final two are about the casting. Do you know how Ed would work in live action? They had to cast somebody who was like eight to ten years old. Mm. Because Ed is eight to twelve years old. Like a literal child. Which is why, like, uh, Watanabe was talking about uh, Ed's gender. Uh, Ed's gender is meaningless. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Ed meets her dad, 
it's Francoise, right? Mm -hmm. But doesn't it was my son was it my daughter? I don't care. Who cares? So you can't cast an adult playing a kid that's no, supposed like, to be androgynous. You're supposed to be playing. Just I cast mean, a kid. So, just so, cast a kid. So the first thing that comes to mind is what Western movie style adaptation stuff would do with a character like that is just make them an AI inside of their heads. A Cortana, right? Just like, this is too goofy to be a real person. Just make it a mascot thing jumping around the screen and it'll be a it'll be a VTube virtual Cortana or um Miss Minutes from Loki, you know? And that and then uh, that's that. A lot a lot of the the people in the chat right now are confirmed yes, Ed is a girl obviously, but that's not the point. The point is and this is number 4. You cast what I think is a 25-year-old woman to play a 10-year-old. And as such, she is doing that bad acting thing that shitty actors trying to appeal young is, is she is falling into all the child acting pitfalls to try and act, sound like a child that kids don't do. And making the noises in, and when faces. She goes deep in the back of her throat to. Kids don't actually I talk get like to that. Get, blah, blah. Yeah, and then and then like also bringing out just like that energy from people you've met in real life who try to act like anime in real life. Yes. <laughs> you know, like the dark side of the con that you that you try to just blot from the memory. It brings all of that back. Foam adventure shit in full goddamn 4d um i think like, yeah you, you know what that's you need a, you, an like, actual you, child you ever, you that's the hear, only way you ever hear the silent hill 2 voice acting comparisons between the character of laura who's a 10 year old girl and in one it's i don't know if it's laura bailey but it's one of that that ensemble cast doing a little girl voice mm -hmm. versus the original voice actor for Laura, who was a girl that looked just like that, that they just grabbed off the street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a there's an obvious vocal difference between adult doing child voice and a real child's voice. Now the thing is, is we all know and have for the longest time like been afraid of the awful child actor that yeah. is in tons of horrible child actors oh, it's on the worst. screen, right? And then, you know, over the last recent years, we've had like, oh shit, it's um, in Logan, you got X-23, right? Oh yeah, she's great. Kills it. You got, um, and then like Hit Girl blew up, you know? And you got all these little examples of like, okay, it could be done, right? Also the, I mean, the child actors in Stranger Things, I thought they did, they did pretty good. Um, and, and in this case, like, yeah. This massive cringe energy, the only way to avoid it, not even go into the positives, but just to get neutral, would for them to be young enough. They, they would have to be uh, to say kid. those lines, and then you're just like, and then the, a child genius would, is on the ship you, you and hanging out with the crew. It down because that type of cartoon energy doesn't yeah. work in a live setting. Yeah, and then it would be completely fine. Yeah. I can't like that's you actually solved it. I I because I'm like I, I saw that and I'm like oh god just burn it it's over like there's it can't be done. But but child actors are more expensive than regular actors. Yeah, but if you're gonna if you we're gonna then fuck up Cowboy Bebop then. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Oh wow. And like I saw and like what uh, the context I've seen is like she's dancing around spike so talking about hey do you want to go to the plot of the movie yeah oh boy. hope you're excited for the second season you guys really like that cowboy bebop movie huh okay so really if we're getting down to brass tacks <laughs> i see somebody say find a 10 year old actor with adhd who can't remember their lines sure that'd be perfect <laughs> um <laughs> so really like the problem is actually that, like, the director has no cringe detector. Yeah, that's that's correct. That's the problem with a lot of people. 
They can't detect cringe because they're so cringe that they can't see it outside themselves. Like Me? It's, I'm cringe. I have a good portion of my body and soul, like a good third of my brain over here. It's all cringe out here. Yeah. But the rest of it sees that cringe and goes, God, God damn it. And yeah. thus can detect it in others. Yeah. No, I, I, I consume it like fuel when the, <laughs> when the mood is right. I can sit and watch some good cringe compilations and just like just ingest it like Galactus. <laughs> But that fucking that caught me left field. Like <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking gutter punch, man. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So I'm not gonna be watching the rest of the show. It's 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 a you need a healthy cringe detector, especially when you're adapting old properties. When you're adapting uh, uh, shit that yeah, like might contain, you know, like, like I said, subtext and a lot of other things. I don't know if there's any part of this where they're like, oh, so we went and sat down with Watanabe and, you know, talked about how to do this or if there's any kind of, like, blessing or whatever the case is, but... I haven't seen any of that. <sighs> well... Man, it, it, it's probably... Well, anyway, more more to say. More to say later than I suppose. But it's probably just rougher that, like some of the casting works really well because like it's not a no salvage but it just means that like no one will ever touch cowboy bebop again then and that'll be that 